Welcome to day four of 60. So you should be getting into the swing of things now. Hopefully, today's tasks. So I expect you to be spending around two hours a day as a minimum to get through this ECNA in 60 days, but console yourself with the fact that it is only for 60 days and then you can get back to normality after that, at least for three years until you have to recertify. So spend some time reviewing yesterday's notes and if you want to go over the labs again, make sure you do that also. Today is about router and switch security and I do cover, in my book I do cover network time protocol but I cover it in two places because it's, it seems to be spread around the syllabus a little bit. Make sure you understand how to configure passwords on the router and switch. Make sure you can protect Talnet access through VTY lines, console access and also protect privilege mode. So if somebody wants to go into um, enable, type enable on the router and go to privilege mode, uh, how do you protect that? Also understand how you can encrypt passwords. The, the Cisco iOS offers a couple of ways for you to encrypt passwords and some are more secure than others. So make sure you understand how to do it and what the difference is between the encryption types. Configuring the router or switch for SSH. Also, how do you how do you connect to the Telnet lines using the SSH protocol? How do you configure the lines for to only accept incoming SSH, SSH traffic? Protecting your VLANs, in particular, and um, one of the syllabus directives is configuring a VLAN other than VLAN one as your native VLAN. They've put that under the security, list of security features. Configuring a port on a switch for security. What your options are, sticky MAC addresses, secure, how it can retain the MAC addresses, and also what action can be taken. Three main actions that a switch port can take when it detects a violation of the port security settings. Logging messages, how do they work on routers? What is a syslog? And you also need to know the different levels of messages. And then also you, for most of these things up here, I think, in fact, all of them, you need to understand how to configure them on the switch and the router. So I'll just come out of that for a second and go through the uh, guide just to give you an idea of what you should be studying. Oh, need to go back a bit, sorry, I've jumped ahead. All right, so day four, router and switch security. I've listed the syllabus directives here. Make sure you do go to cisco.com forward slash go forward slash ccna in case they make any changes. Protecting telnet access, protecting enable mode. Configuring different users to have different access. Pretty rudimentary stuff really. I mentioned SNMP briefly, but it's covered in more detail later on because it's mentioned in the syllabus. Configuring SSH. Enable passwords, a lot of basic stuff really, but it still counts towards securing your router. Changing the management VLAN. Cisco Discovery Protocol is covered in a fair amount of detail actually. It can pop up quite often in the exam, so you need to understand what it is and how that works. Banner messages, pretty boring. They don't do much for security, but you need to understand those. A VTP passwords. Different types of authentication you can use. Again, I mentioned CDP, max spoofing attacks, and we're going into switch port security, static, dynamic, and sticky secure addresses. You really need to understand uh, those really well. Make sure you do some questions and answers on what you've learned, and then go through a lab with whichever study guide you're using. So that's all for today, and I will see you tomorrow.